And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Again this week, I'm teaching on a subject that I've entitled, You've Already Got It, and the subtitle of this book is, So Quit Trying to Get It. PEOPLE ARE ASKING GOD FOR THINGS THAT HE'S ALREADY GIVEN. AND, YOU KNOW, I'VE USED THIS EXAMPLE A LOT, BUT IF I WAS IN A CHURCH SERVICE, I'LL OFTEN GO AND JUST HAND MY BIBLE TO SOMEONE, AND THEN I'LL SAY, NOW, WHAT IF THIS PERSON HAS GOT MY BIBLE LAYING IN THEIR LAP? HOW WOULD I RESPOND IF THEY SAY, COULD I HAVE YOUR BIBLE? IF YOU'RE ASKING ME TO GIVE YOU SOMETHING THAT I'VE ALREADY GIVEN YOU, HOW DO YOU RESPOND TO SOMETHING LIKE THAT? YOU KNOW, HONESTLY, I DON'T KNOW HOW I'D RESPOND. I'D PROBABLY JUST BE SILENT, LIKE WONDERING, WHAT ARE THEY ASKING FOR? WHAT DO THEY MEAN? DON'T THEY REALIZE THAT I'VE ALREADY GIVEN THEM A BIBLE? IF YOU'RE ASKING FOR SOMETHING THAT YOU'VE ALREADY GOT, THE PERSON WHO GAVE IT TO YOU IS JUST KIND OF DUMBFOUNDED, LIKE, uh, YOU KNOW, THEY DON'T KNOW WHAT TO SAY. VERY SIMILAR TO THE RESPONSE THAT YOU'RE GETTING FROM GOD WHEN YOU'RE SAYING, OH, GOD, HEAL ME, AND YOU HEAR NOTHING. AND, OH, GOD, BLESS ME, AND, OH, GOD, GIVE ME FINANCES, AND YOU'RE BEGGING GOD FOR ALL THESE THINGS, AND YOU (coughs) AREN'T HEARING ANYTHING. IF GOD COULD BE CONFUSED, I BELIEVE THAT GOD WOULD BE CONFUSED, THINKING, WHY ARE THEY ASKING ME TO DO WHAT I'VE ALREADY DONE? DIDN'T I SAY, LIKE IN, uh, YOU KNOW, 1 PETER 2, 24, THAT BY MY STRIPES THEY WERE HEALED? THEY WERE HEALED? IF THEY WERE HEALED, THEN THEY ARE HEALED? WHY ARE THEY ASKING ME TO HEAL THEM? IT'S BECAUSE WE DON'T BELIEVE WE ARE HEALED. WE BELIEVE MORE WHAT WE FEEL, WHAT THE DOCTOR SAYS, THAN WHAT GOD SAYS. AND SO THAT that SILENCE THAT WE GET ON THE OTHER END OF OUR PRAYER IS GOD... YOU KNOW, AGAIN, I'm, I'M... TAKING SOME LIBERTIES HERE, BUT IN A SENSE, IT'S LIKE GOD SAYING TO JESUS, DIDN'T YOU TELL THEM THAT BY YOUR STRIPES THEY WERE HEALED? WHY ARE THEY ASKING FOR THIS WHEN YOU SAID THAT YOU'VE ALREADY DONE IT? YOU KNOW, IT'S JUST NOT SMART TO DO THAT. THIS IS WHAT I'M TRYING TO GET ACROSS, THAT GOD HAS ANTICIPATED EVERY PROBLEM WE COULD EVER HAVE, AND BEFORE YOU EVER HAD THE NEED, GOD HAD ALREADY CREATED THE SUPPLY. THE SUPPLY EXISTED, AND IF YOU'RE BORN AGAIN, IF JESUS HAS BECOME YOUR LORD, WE READ THESE VERSES ALREADY THAT YOU HAVE ALREADY RECEIVED FORGIVENESS. GOD ALREADY LIVES ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, AND EVERYTHING THAT GOD IS AND HAS IS INSIDE OF YOU. YOU DON'T NEED GOD TO GIVE YOU SOMETHING. YOU NEED TO DRAW OUT WHAT GOD HAS ALREADY PUT ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. AND I'VE BEEN READING THROUGH EPHESIANS CHAPTER 1. LET ME GO DOWN TO VERSE 15. AND IN VERSE 15 THROUGH THE END OF THIS CHAPTER, PAUL BEGINS TO PRAY A PRAYER. BEFORE I READ THIS PRAYER, LET ME JUST ASK YOU A QUESTION. IF YOU WERE ASKED TO WRITE A PRAYER OUT FOR PEOPLE 2,000 YEARS IN THE FUTURE, YOU KNOW, WHEN PAUL WROTE THIS, IT WAS NEARLY 2,000 YEARS AGO, AND HERE WE ARE READING HIS PRAYER TODAY. IF YOU WERE GOING TO WRITE A PRAYER FOR PEOPLE 2,000 YEARS IN THE FUTURE, HOW WOULD YOU PRAY FOR THEM? BECAUSE I'VE HEARD SO MANY PEOPLE PRAY, I CAN TELL YOU WHAT THE MAJORITY OF PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM WOULD PRAY. YOU WOULD PRAY SOMETHING LIKE, OH, GOD, JUST BLESS THESE PEOPLE. GOD, POUR YOUR SPIRIT OUT UPON THESE PEOPLE. DO A NEW THING. OH, GOD, MOVE. OH, GOD... AND IT WOULD BE ALL PLEADING WITH GOD TO DO SOMETHING, SOME NEW THING, TOUCH THESE PEOPLE. HOW IS PAUL'S PRAYER? PAY ATTENTION TO THIS. PAUL'S PRAYER ISN'T GOD, DO SOMETHING. GOD, POUR OUT YOUR SPIRIT. GOD, MOVE. IT'S GOD... SHOW THEM WHAT YOU'VE ALREADY DONE. THAT'S TOTALLY DIFFERENT. MOST OF US ARE ASKING GOD TO DO SOMETHING HE HASN'T DONE. PAUL WAS PRAYING THAT WE WOULD GET A REVELATION OF WHAT JESUS HAS ALREADY DONE. HE'S ALREADY PROVIDED EVERYTHING. IN VERSE 15, HE SAYS, WHEREFORE, I ALSO, AFTER I HEARD OF YOUR FAITH IN THE LORD JESUS AND LOVE UNTO ALL THE SAINTS, CEASE NOT TO GIVE THANKS FOR YOU, MAKING MENTION OF YOU IN MY PRAYERS, THAT THE GOD OF OUR LORD JESUS CHRIST, THE FATHER OF GLORY, MAY GIVE UNTO YOU THE SPIRIT OF WISDOM AND REVELATION IN THE KNOWLEDGE OF HIM. SOMEBODY RIGHT THERE SAYS, WELL, RIGHT THERE HE'S ASKING GOD TO GIVE THEM WISDOM. IF YOU TAKE IT IN CONTEXT, VERSE 8 SAYS, WHEREIN HE HATH ABOUNDED TOWARDS US IN ALL WISDOM AND PRUDENCE. GOD HAD ALREADY GIVEN THEM. WHEN YOU GET BORN AGAIN, YOU'VE GOT THE MIND OF CHRIST IN YOUR SPIRIT. 
1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 2, VERSE 16 SAYS THAT. YOU'VE ALREADY GOT THE MIND OF CHRIST. YOU'VE ALREADY GOT WISDOM. HE'S JUST PRAYING THAT GOD WOULD DRAW THIS WISDOM OUT. IF YOU TAKE IT IN CONTEXT, YOU CAN SEE THAT. SO HE SAYS THAT GOD WOULD GIVE UNTO YOU THE SPIRIT OF WISDOM AND REVELATION AND THE KNOWLEDGE OF HIM. AND LOOK AT THIS IN VERSE 18, THE EYES OF YOUR UNDERSTANDING BEING ENLIGHTENED. IN OTHER WORDS, THIS IS JUST PRAYING THAT YOU WOULD BEGIN TO UNDERSTAND WHAT GOD HAS ALREADY DONE. HE'S NOT PRAYING THAT GOD WOULD TOUCH THEM, DO A NEW THING, POUR OUT YOUR SPIRIT, GIVE THEM FAITH, GIVE THEM A NEW ANOINTING, DO SOMETHING YOU'VE NEVER DONE BEFORE. NO, HE'S PRAYING THAT THEIR EYES WOULD BE OPENED TO WHAT THEY ALREADY HAVE. THE EYES OF YOUR UNDERSTANDING. THE WORD FOR UNDERSTANDING RIGHT HERE IS THE GREEK WORD DIANOIA, AND IT MEANS DEEP THOUGHT, NOT SURFACE LEVEL, NOT JUST INTELLECTUAL KNOWLEDGE, BUT A HEART KNOWLEDGE THAT THEIR EYES WOULD BE IN LINE, THAT THEY MAY KNOW WHAT IS THE HOPE OF HIS CALLING. AGAIN, I HAVE TAUGHT ON EVERY ONE OF THESE PHRASES FOR 30 MINUTES TO AN HOUR AT A TIME. I'M SKIPPING THROUGH THIS VERY QUICKLY. BUT THE EYES OF YOUR UNDERSTANDING BEING OPEN TO THE HOPE OF HIS CALLING. WE ARE PARTAKERS OF HIS CALLING, OF HIS MINISTRY. I AM REPRESENTING HIM. YOU ARE REPRESENTING HIM, CHRIST. WE HAVE A UNION WITH HIM. MAN, that, THAT IS AWESOME. I WISHED I HAD TIME TO TEACH ON THAT. AND WHAT THE RICHES OF THE GLORY OF HIS INHERITANCE IN THE SAINTS. SOME PEOPLE, WHEN THEY THINK ABOUT THE GLORY OF GOD, THEY WANT TO PICTURE THE THRONE IN HEAVEN. THEY WANT TO PICTURE THE RAINBOW THAT SURROUNDS THE THRONE, ALL OF THE ANGELS, THE 24 ELDERS, THE CRYSTAL SEA, MULTITUDE, AND ALL OF THOSE THINGS ARE GOOD IN THEIR PLACE. BUT THIS IS SAYING THAT YOUR EYES WOULD BE OPEN TO THE GLORY OF HIS INHERITANCE THAT'S IN THE SAINTS. I'M NOT DENYING THAT HEAVEN IS AWESOME. THE GLORY OF GOD IS IN HEAVEN, BUT THE GLORY OF GOD IS IN YOU. 2 THESSALONIANS CHAPTER 2 SAYS WE HAVE BEEN CALLED TO THE OBTAINING OF THE GLORY OF THE LORD JESUS. YOU NOW HAVE THE GLORY OF GOD IN YOUR SPIRIT. AND SOME OF YOU ARE IMMEDIATELY LOOKING LIKE, WHERE IS IT? YOU LOOK IN THE MIRROR. IT'S NOT IN THE PHYSICAL BODY. IT'S NOT IN YOUR MIND UNLESS YOU'VE BEEN RENEWING YOUR MIND AND DRAWING THAT GLORY OUT AND RENEWING YOUR MIND, BUT IT'S IN YOUR BORN AGAIN SPIRIT. YOU HAVE THE GLORY OF GOD. THE INHERITANCE IS IN THE SAINTS. IT SAYS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 8, I BELIEVE IT'S VERSE 18, THAT THE SUFFERINGS OF THIS PRESENT WORLD ARE NOT WORTHY TO BE COMPARED TO THE GLORY WHICH SHALL BE REVEALED IN US, NOT TO US, BUT IN US. YOU ALREADY HAVE THE GLORY OF GOD, AND WHEN WE GET TO HEAVEN, WE'RE GOING TO GET A GLORIFIED BODY AND A PERFECT SOUL, MIND THAT DOESN'T HAVE ANY LIMITATIONS, AND THE GLORY THAT'S ALREADY IN YOU IS NOW GOING TO FLOW THROUGH YOU IN ALL OF THESE THINGS. BUT YOU'VE ALREADY GOT IT IN YOU. IT'S NOT GOING TO BE REVEALED TO YOU, BUT IN YOU. ROMANS CHAPTER 8, VERSE 18. YOU HAVE THE GLORY OF GOD. THIS INHERITANCE IS IN THE SAINTS. IF FOR SOME REASON YOU HAD TO REPLACE, if, IF YOU COULD JUST VOID THE GLORY THAT'S ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, THE POWER, THE INHERITANCE, THE RICHES OF THE GLORY OF THIS INHERITANCE, IF YOU COULD JUST SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER WIPE ALL THAT OUT AND IT HAD TO BE REPLACED, IT WOULD BANKRUPT HEAVEN TO REPLACE WHAT'S ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. MAN, YOU'VE ALREADY GOT THIS GLORY ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. BUT IT DOESN'T DO YOU ANY GOOD IF IT'S JUST TRAPPED IN YOUR SPIRIT. AND IF IT DOESN'T COME THROUGH YOUR SOUL, IF YOU DON'T KNOW WHAT YOU'VE GOT, AND IF YOU DON'T HAVE IT IN YOUR BODY, IF YOU AREN'T ACTING ON IT, IT, it DOESN'T DO YOU ANY GOOD. BUT SOMEDAY WE'LL GET TO HEAVEN, AND WE WILL HAVE THIS GLORY REVEALED TO US. AND I BELIEVE THAT THAT'S ONE OF THE REASONS THAT, YOU KNOW, GOD IS GOING TO HAVE TO WIPE uh, TEARS AWAY FROM OUR EYES. MOST PEOPLE INTERPRET THAT AS WE JUST SUFFERED SO MUCH IN THIS LIFE THAT WE'RE GOING TO LIMP INTO HEAVEN AND WHEN WE GET THERE, WE'RE ALL GOING TO BE CRYING BECAUSE, YOU KNOW, THIS EARTH LIFE WAS SO BAD. BUT I BELIEVE IT COULD ALSO BE THAT WHEN WE STAND BEFORE THE LORD AND ALL OF A SUDDEN WE GET A GLORIFIED BODY AND A RENEWED MIND AND WE UNDERSTAND WHAT WE HAD THE WHOLE TIME, THAT WE HAD THE GLORY OF GOD. I HAD THE SAME POWER ON THE INSIDE OF ME THAT RAISED JESUS FROM THE DEAD AND I SUFFERED WITH SICKNESS AND DISEASE AND ARTHRITIS AND THIS PAIN AND THAT PAIN AND THIS AND I, 
PUT UP WITH ALL OF THIS WHEN I HAD THE GLORY OF GOD ON THE INSIDE OF ME THE WHOLE TIME? I BELIEVE THAT THERE'S GOING TO BE WEEPING AND WAILING AND GNASHING OF TEETH, AND GOD IS GOING TO HAVE TO SUPERNATURALLY WIPE TEARS AWAY FROM OUR EYES, NOT ONLY BECAUSE OF ALL OF THE HARDSHIP THAT WE HAD IN THIS LIFE, BUT WHEN WE REALIZE THAT WE LIVE SO FAR BELOW OUR PRIVILEGES AND DIDN'T TAKE ADVANTAGE OF IT. I THINK THAT THERE'S GOING TO BE SOME WEEPING AND WAILING, AND GOD'S GOING TO HAVE TO WIPE TEARS AWAY FROM OUR EYES. SO IN THAT 18TH VERSE, HE'S PRAYING THAT YOU WOULD SEE the, WHAT IS THE RICHES OF THE GLORY OF HIS INHERITANCE IN THE SAINTS. AND IN VERSE 19, AND WHAT IS THE EXCEEDING GREATNESS OF HIS POWER TO USWARD WHO BELIEVE ACCORDING TO THE WORKING OF HIS MIGHTY POWER WHICH HE WROUGHT IN CHRIST WHEN HE RAISED HIM FROM THE DEAD AND SET HIM AT HIS OWN RIGHT HAND IN THE HEAVENLY PLACES FAR ABOVE ALL PRINCIPALITY AND POWER AND MIGHT AND DOMINION IN EVERY NAME THAT IS NAMED, NOT ONLY IN THIS WORLD, BUT ALSO IN THAT WHICH IS TO COME, AND HATH PUT ALL THINGS UNDER HIS FEET, AND GAVE HIM TO BE THE HEAD OVER ALL THINGS TO THE CHURCH, WHICH IS HIS BODY, THE FULLNESS OF HIM THAT FILLETH ALL IN ALL. AGAIN, I COULD TAKE EVERY ONE OF THESE PHRASES IN EACH INDIVIDUAL VERSE AND JUST AMPLIFY ON THESE. BUT THE MAIN THING I WANT TO GET ACROSS IS IN VERSE 19, HE'S PRAYING THAT YOUR EYES WOULD BE OPEN TO THE EXCEEDING GREATNESS OF HIS POWER TOWARDS US WHO BELIEVE. THE SAME POWER THAT HE USED WHEN HE RAISED JESUS CHRIST FROM THE DEAD. THERE ARE A LOT OF CHRISTIANS THAT THINK, WELL, YES, I HAVE SOME POWER, BUT I JUST DON'T HAVE ENOUGH POWER. OH, GOD, GIVE ME POWER. GIVE ME MORE ANOINTING. GIVE ME MORE FAITH. YOU KNOW, THERE ARE PEOPLE THAT WILL USE SCRIPTURES LIKE IN SECOND KINGS CHAPTER 2 WHERE ELISHA RECEIVED A DOUBLE PORTION OF ELIJAH'S ANOINTING, AND HE WOUND UP PERFORMING TWICE AS MANY MIRACLES. AND I'VE ACTUALLY BEEN IN CHURCHES WHERE THEY HAVE DOUBLE PORTION NIGHT, AND THEY WILL COME AND, YOU KNOW, LET US ANOINT YOU WITH OIL, AND WE'RE GOING TO PRAY THAT YOU'LL GET TWICE THE ANOINTING. NOW, YOU COULD GET TWICE THE ANOINTING FUNCTIONAL, IN YOU, BUT YOU CAN'T GET TWICE THE ANOINTING. ELISHA COULD GET TWICE THE ANOINTING THAT WAS ON ELIJAH BECAUSE HE ONLY HAD A PORTION. BUT WE HAVE THE FULLNESS. I JUST READ THIS IN THE LAST VERSE, VERSE 23, THAT HIS BODY IS THE FULLNESS OF HIM THAT FILLETH ALL IN ALL. IT SAYS IN JOHN CHAPTER 1, I BELIEVE, VERSE 16, THAT OF HIS FULLNESS HAVE ALL WE RECEIVED, AND GRACE FOR GRACE. YOU HAVE THE FULLNESS OF THE GOD. YOU CAN'T GET MORE FULL THAN FULL. YOU CAN'T GET A DOUBLE PORTION OF ALL. YOU DIDN'T GET JUST A LITTLE BIT OF JESUS WHEN YOU GOT BORN AGAIN. YOU GOT THE WHOLE JESUS. YOU HAVE THE FULLNESS OF THE GODHEAD DWELLING IN YOU BODILY, AND YOU CAN'T GET MORE. SO WHEN YOU SAY, GOD, I JUST NEED MORE OF YOU. I NEED MORE POWER. I NEED MORE ANOINTING. I NEED MORE FAITH. I NEED... YOU MIGHT NEED MORE OPERATIVE IN YOUR LIFE, BUT YOU CAN'T GET MORE. WHERE WOULD GOD GO TO GET MORE? YOU'VE ALREADY GOT THE FULLNESS OF JESUS ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. WHERE ARE YOU GOING TO GET ANYTHING MORE THAN THAT? SEE, THE REASON THAT WE AREN'T SEEING THE POWER OF GOD MANIFEST IS, FIRST OF ALL, WE DON'T KNOW WHAT WE HAVE. WE DON'T BELIEVE IT. WE'RE ASKING GOD FOR MORE WHEN THE TRUTH IS YOU'VE ALREADY GOT IT. YOU DON'T NEED MORE. WHAT YOU NEED IS REVELATION OF WHAT YOU'VE ALREADY GOT. YOU NEED TO START USING WHAT YOU'VE ALREADY GOT. WE NEED TO GET INTO FAITH INSTEAD OF INTO UNBELIEF. AND IT SAYS THAT THIS POWER THAT HAS COME TOWARDS US IS THE SAME POWER THAT HE WROUGHT IN CHRIST WHEN HE RAISED HIM FROM THE DEAD. YOU KNOW, I DON'T KNOW HOW TO EXPRESS THIS, BUT IF YOU COULD HOOK THE POWER OF GOD UP TO SOME KIND OF A PHYSICAL METER THAT COULD MEASURE THE POWER OF GOD, LIKE ONE OF THESE VU METERS THAT YOU SEE, YOU KNOW, SWING OVER. IF YOU COULD SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER PUT THE POWER OF GOD TO SOME KIND OF A METER, I BELIEVE THAT THE CREATION OF THE UNIVERSE WAS AWESOME, BUT IT WOULDN'T BE NEAR AS GREAT AS JESUS BEING RAISED FROM THE DEAD. THAT WOULD PEG OUT THAT METER. AND ONE OF THE REASONS I BELIEVE THAT IS BECAUSE IN CREATION, THERE WASN'T ANY RESISTANCE. THERE IS NO INDICATION THAT SATAN EXISTED AT THAT TIME. HE WAS STILL LUCIFER, AN ANOINTED ANGEL THAT WAS WORKING FOR GOD INSTEAD OF AGAINST HIM. THERE WASN'T FALLEN ANGELS. THERE WAS NO RESISTANCE TO CREATION. 
BUT I CAN GUARANTEE YOU AT THE RESURRECTION OF JESUS, SATAN HAD EVERY DEMON OUT OF HELL, EVERY, EVERY BIT OF FORCE THAT HE HAD WAS TRYING TO BLOCK JESUS BEING RAISED FROM THE DEAD. SO THERE WAS RESISTANCE WHEN IT CAME TO RAISING JESUS FROM THE DEAD, AND THEREFORE RAISING JESUS FROM THE DEAD, NOT JUST HIS PHYSICAL BODY, BUT BRINGING JESUS OUT OF HELL WITH THE KEYS OF DEATH AND OF HELL DANGLING ON HIS SIDE, THAT WAS THE GREATEST MANIFESTATION OF GOD'S POWER THAT THERE HAS EVER BEEN. YOU KNOW, THE CHURCH THAT I ATTENDED FOR A LONG TIME, IT WAS A LARGE CHURCH THAT HAD THESE uh, MUSICALS and, AND PLAYS AND THINGS, AND IN ONE OF THEM, THEY HAD A PERSON THAT WAS A PERSONIFICATION OF SATAN. AND WHEN, YOU KNOW, JESUS WAS BEING PERSECUTED BY THE SCRIBES AND THE PHARISEES AND THE HYPOCRITES, THIS PERSON IN THIS BLACK WAS ALWAYS THERE, WHISPERED IN PEOPLE'S EAR, AND IT MADE A POINT THAT SATAN WAS THE ONE THAT WAS INSPIRING ALL OF THIS OPPOSITION. AND WHEN IT CAME TO THE RESURRECTION OF JESUS, THEY HAD A uh, TOMB THERE, AND THEY HAD A HUGE STONE THAT HAD BEEN ROLLED OVER uh, THE THING, AND THEN THE RESURRECTION MORNING CAME, AND IT SHOWED SATAN, IT SHOWED THIS PERSON THAT PERSONIFIED SATAN PUSHING WITH ALL OF HIS MIGHT AGAINST THAT STONE THAT WAS COVERING THE TOMB. AND THEN THERE WAS THIS EXPLOSION, AND THERE WAS ALL OF THIS SMOKE, AND WHEN THE SMOKE CLEARED, YOU SAW SATAN LAYING ON HIS BACK WITH THIS BIG TOMBSTONE ON TOP OF HIM, AND JESUS STANDING ON TOP OF IT WITH HIS ARMS UP. AND OF COURSE, IT WAS JUST A WAY OF TRYING TO ILLUSTRATE THAT SATAN AND ALL OF HIS POWER WAS FIGHTING AGAINST THE RESURRECTION OF JESUS, AND YET HE COULDN'T STOP IT. YOU HAVE THAT RAISING FROM THE DEAD POWER, THE GREATEST DISPLAY OF GOD'S POWER THAT HAS EVER EXISTED IN THE HISTORY OF THE WORLD. THAT SAME POWER IS IN YOU. THIS IS WHAT HE'S SAYING. GO BACK WITH ALL OF THOSE THINGS I'VE SAID AND REMEMBER THIS. HE'S PRAYING THAT THE EYES OF YOUR UNDERSTANDING WOULD BE ENLIGHTENED, THAT YOU MAY KNOW WHAT IS THE HOPE OF HIS CALLING, WHAT THE RICHES OF THE GLORY OF HIS INHERITANCE IN THE SAINTS, WHAT IS THE EXCEEDING GREATNESS OF HIS POWER TO USWARD WHO BELIEVE ACCORDING TO. THE WORD ACCORDING TO MEANS IN PROPORTION TO OR TO THE DEGREE OF. LOOK IT UP IN A DICTIONARY, AND THAT'S WHAT IT MEANS. SO WE HAVE THE POWER OF GOD ACCORDING TO THE POWER THAT HE USED, THAT, it, that HE WROUGHT IN CHRIST WHEN HE RAISED HIM FROM THE DEAD AND SET HIM IN HIS OWN RIGHT HAND IN THE HEAVENLY PLACES FAR ABOVE, NOT JUST ABOVE, BUT FAR ABOVE, ALL PRINCIPALITY AND POWER AND MIGHT AND DOMINION AND EVERY NAME THAT IS NAMED, NOT ONLY IN THIS WORLD, BUT ALSO IN THAT WHICH IS TO COME. YOU ARE SEATED WITH CHRIST IN HEAVENLY PLACES. YOU ARE FAR ABOVE ALL OF THE DEVIL'S POWER AND DOMINION AND PRINCIPALITIES. AND AGAIN, SEE, MOST CHRISTIANS, uh, THEY KNOW THAT THERE IS A DEVIL. THEY KNOW THAT THERE ARE DEMONS. THEY KNOW THAT THERE IS SPIRITUAL OPPOSITION, BUT THE AVERAGE CHRISTIAN IS INTIMIDATED AND AFRAID OF THE DEVIL BECAUSE THEY DON'T KNOW WHAT THEY ALREADY HAVE. AND THEY ARE ASKING GOD, OH, GOD, GIVE ME POWER. AND THEY, THEY WILL EVEN COME TO THE LORD. I'VE HEARD PEOPLE BEFORE, OH, GOD, REBUKE THE DEVIL. NO, HE SAID IN JAMES CHAPTER 4, VERSE 7, YOU RESIST THE DEVIL, AND HE WILL FLEE FROM YOU. GOD AND THE DEVIL HAVE ALREADY MEANT. JESUS BEAT HIM. JESUS IS NOW FAR ABOVE. AND YOU ARE, YOU HAVE THAT SAME POWER AND AUTHORITY. YOU ARE NOW SEATED WITH CHRIST IN HEAVENLY PLACES. YOU HAVE THAT SAME POWER AND AUTHORITY. BUT IF YOU DON'T KNOW IT, AND IF YOU ARE SAYING, OH, GOD, PLEASE REBUKE THE DEVIL FOR ME, IT WON'T GET DONE. HE SAID, YOU RESIST THE DEVIL, AND HE WILL FLEE FROM YOU. IT'S NOT YOUR POWER, IT'S GOD'S POWER, BUT IT'S IN YOU, AND IF YOU DON'T USE IT, IT WON'T GET DONE. IF YOU'RE ASKING GOD TO REBUKE THE DEVIL, IF YOU'RE ASKING GOD TO TAKE THIS SICKNESS AWAY, TO TAKE THIS POVERTY AWAY, TO TAKE YOUR DEPRESSION AWAY, AND IF YOU'RE JUST SITTING THERE PASSIVELY AS IF I CAN DO NOTHING, BUT GOD, YOU CAN DO ALL THINGS, WOULD YOU PLEASE TOUCH ME? WOULD YOU DO THIS? YOU'RE GOING TO DIE. YOU'RE GOING TO BE POOR. YOU AREN'T GOING TO BE OVER YOUR DEPRESSION. BECAUSE GOD GAVE THAT AUTHORITY AND POWER TOWARDS YOU, AND YOU HAVE TO, FIRST OF ALL, BELIEVE IT. AGAIN, A VERSE I'VE USED MANY TIMES, PHILEMON 1, 6, THE COMMUNICATION OF YOUR FAITH BECOMES EFFECTUAL, THAT MEANS IT BEGINS TO WORK, BY THE ACKNOWLEDGING OF EVERY GOOD THING WHICH IS IN YOU IN CHRIST JESUS. 
YOU HAVE TO ACKNOWLEDGE THAT IT'S THERE. YOU HAVE TO BELIEVE. YOU HAVE TO KNOW THAT YOU ARE SEATED WITH CHRIST ABOVE ALL PRINCIPALITY AND POWER. AND THEN YOU HAVE TO USE IT. AND THE POWER OF GOD IS VOICE ACTIVATED. PROVERBS 18, 21, DEATH AND LIFE ARE IN THE POWER OF THE TONGUE. YOU'VE GOT TO START SPEAKING IT OUT YOUR MOUTH AND SAY, SATAN, I RESIST YOU IN THE NAME OF JESUS. YOU FLEE FROM ME. IT'S GOD'S POWER, BUT IT'S IN ME, AND I COMMAND YOU, I RESIST YOU, AND YOU HAVE TO FLEE FROM ME. AND ONLY WHEN YOU TAKE YOUR AUTHORITY AND START USING IT AND RESISTING THE DEVIL WILL THAT SICKNESS, WILL THAT POVERTY, WILL THAT DEPRESSION AND OPPRESSION LEAVE YOU. YOU CAN'T JUST SAY, OH, GOD, PLEASE DO IT FOR ME. GOD HAS DONE HIS PART. YOU'VE ALREADY GOT THE SAME POWER THAT GOD USED TO RAISE JESUS FROM THE DEAD LIVING ON THE INSIDE OF YOU IF YOU ARE BORN AGAIN. THAT OUGHT TO BE ENOUGH FOR YOUR HEADACHE, FOR YOUR SUGAR DIABETES, FOR YOUR CANCER, FOR YOUR COLD, FOR YOUR WHATEVER. THE POWER THAT'S ON THE INSIDE OF YOU IS SO EXCEEDINGLY GREAT THAT IT'S NOT EVEN COMPARABLE TO THE PROBLEM THAT YOU HAVE. I HAD A MAN COME TO ME ONE TIME, AND HE ASKED IF I WOULD PRAY FOR HIM, AND I SAID, WHAT'S WRONG? AND HE SAID, I GOT PAIN IN MY NECK. IT GOES DOWN INTO MY SHOULDERS, DOWN MY SPINE. I GOT PAIN IN MY HIP. I GOT A SIATIC NERVE. AND HE DESCRIBED THINGS FROM HEAD TO TOE, ALL THE WAY DOWN TO HIS FEET, TALKING ABOUT HIS FEET HURTING. AND HE SAYS, BUT IF YOU COULD JUST PRAY AND GET THE PAIN IN MY NECK TO LEAVE, I COULD LIVE WITH ALL THE REST. AND WHEN HE SAID THAT, I JUST SAID, WELL, I UNDERSTAND. I SAID, IF WE WERE TO ASK GOD TO HEAL ALL OF THESE THINGS AT ONE TIME, THE LIGHTS IN HEAVEN MIGHT DIM. I'M NOT SURE THAT GOD'S GOT ENOUGH POWER TO PULL ALL OF THIS OFF. I MEAN, LET'S JUST ASK HIM FOR A LITTLE PORTION OF THIS BECAUSE HE MAY NOT BE ABLE TO DO ALL OF IT. <laughs> AND WHEN I SAID THAT, THIS GUY JUST SAID, BOY, THAT WAS REALLY STUPID WHAT I SAID, WASN'T IT? I SAID, IT WAS REAL STUPID. I SAID, GOD'S POWER IS SO EXCEEDINGLY GREAT THAT IT IS NO PROBLEM FOR ANYTHING FROM YOUR HEAD TO YOUR TOE. WE GOT A WOMAN IN OUR BIBLE COLLEGE. SHE CAME TO ONE OF OUR CONFERENCES THIS YEAR, AND I FORGET THE EXACT NUMBER, BUT IT WAS OVER 50-SOMETHING DIAGNOSED PROBLEMS IN HER BODY THAT SHE WAS LIVING WITH. AND DID YOU KNOW, SHE'S NOW IN OUR BIBLE SCHOOL, AND I TALKED TO HER JUST LAST WEEK, AND I FORGET NOW, BUT I THINK THERE MIGHT BE ONE OR TWO THINGS THAT SHE'S de STILL DEALING WITH. IN JUST A COUPLE OF MONTHS, OVER 50 THINGS, DIAGNOSED PROBLEMS IN HER BODY HAVE ALL BEEN HEALED. GOD IS NOT SHORT OF POWER. THE POWER THAT IS ON THE INSIDE OF YOU IS THE SAME POWER THAT RAISED JESUS CHRIST FROM THE DEAD, AND IT'S MORE THAN ENOUGH FOR ANYTHING THAT YOU NEED. BUT YOU'VE GOT TO FIRST OF ALL ACKNOWLEDGE THAT YOU HAVE IT. QUIT ASKING GOD TO GIVE YOU SOMETHING THAT YOU'VE ALREADY GOT. START THANKING HIM THAT YOU'VE GOT IT. START USING YOUR POWER AND START AGREEING, AND THE DEVIL WILL FLEE FROM YOU. I'M OUT OF TIME TODAY, BUT I AM GOING TO CONTINUE THIS TEACHING AGAIN TOMORROW. I ENCOURAGE YOU TO LISTEN. OUR ANNOUNCER IS GOING TO TELL YOU ABOUT HOW TO GET THIS TEACHING. Uh, THERE'S, I THINK, SIX PARTS TO THIS TEACHING IF YOU GET THE CD'S OR DVD'S. TODAY'S MY LAST DAY TO MAKE THE FIRST TEACHING IN THIS SET AVAILABLE. AND SO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER. HE'LL GIVE YOU ALL OF THIS INFORMATION. AND THEN PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY AND JOIN ME AGAIN TOMORROW AS I CONTINUE THE GOSPEL TRUTH.